Today on this Fixture Fundamentals lesson, we're going to be fabricating a section of guardrail for the Sci-Fi Office project. This section of railing is actually pretty simple for experienced fabricators, but what I want to do is bring in somebody inexperienced, and I want to bring in my 15-year-old son, Jet. And you can tell how green he is by how many holes he has in his sweatshirt. <laughs> So here's the problem. There's many pieces to this railing and there's lots of angles and different lengths. Jet's new to sock cutting and any one of those cuts could possibly be wrong. In order for Jet to have success, we're gonna need to ID and locate all the parts and place them in the correct location. Jet's gonna get to cheat because he has a fixture table and I've provided him with a fixture map. Creating a fixture map like this is gonna level the playing field. Jet is going to set up all the fixtures on this table according to this map. I'm gonna teach you how to set this up, Jet, and then we're gonna have a railing when we're all done, and that way you can stare at it every day. It's gonna be, be fun. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So I think we should start with the most complicated first, and it's this one. What makes this one difficult is its overall length. As you can tell, we're gonna be using the full length of the big table, and then we're gonna to have to add on a short section to be able to fixture this. So let's start with that first. All right, in order to extend the table surface, we're gonna use the dragon wagon and it's gonna bump right up to the side of this. If you notice, it's the exact same width as this main magnum table here. Now, generally, I like to bolt the tables through the sides, but this time we're gonna use a little bit different technique. I'm gonna bolt it from the top because this is just a quick temporary setup. So here, Jet, take this riser and we're gonna go to the edge. And on the dragon wagon side, we need a red a little spacer because this is a half inch thick and this table is a one inch thick. So right now what we're doing is we're creating ourselves a little shelf here. Now our table heights are way off. The dragon wagon is much higher than the magnum table. And all I gotta do is just turn the wheels on the casters. Sometimes it's much easier to do this than getting under the table. This edge is smooth. Now we worry about the level. So you can see we have a gap in here and all I gotta do is just lower the back leg until it touches. What do you think, Jet? Looks good. Does it pass your inspection? Yeah. Okay, let's take a look at the drawing, Jet, and let's see what we need to do next. So on this map that I gave you, a whole bunch of numbers that are corresponding with the holes on the table. One through 63. One, two, three, four, five. And then as we go up the row here, we have A, B, C, D, E. So now we have a coordinate system. We can plot any hole on this whole grid by labeling each row of holes. So now when you look at your drawing, all you need to do is look at which row is the fixture. So a good example of that is this fence block right here is in row four and the back is in B. Place the part where it goes. Okay. What do you think? Is that pretty simple? Yeah. I think you can just follow, start following the map. Yeah. The bottom of the block is B4. Okay. So right there. You sunk my battleship. Okay, so what I want you to do is just go through, follow the map, and put all the fence blocks in. Should take you about a minute. Okay. So as Jet's doing this, let me walk you through what a fence block is. If you've never seen a fence block, this is a one inch wide, two inches tall, four inches long piece of steel with two pins in the bottom that are removable. What you're able to do with this is you're able to offset by changing the orientation forward or backwards by an inch. So what Jet's doing is he's making sure that the block is set up in the right direction with the pin in the correct hole. That's how simple these are. Now we have some hard stops to place our material up against. Okay, I think that's all done. Okay, that didn't take too long. Uh -huh. Looks like you got it. So that's good. So now let's take a look at the next problem here. What we're building is we're building this cool offset railing. And now we need to locate those components. And we're gonna do that with a tooth block because it doesn't fall on the grid and we're no longer able to use the fence, right? Because mm -hmm. it's at a different angle and in a weird location. Yeah. Can't use these blocks. Now there's a number on the side of the drawings that corresponds with how much this tooth block is extended from the hole that it's gonna be in. So if we look at it really closely here, you can tell that front hole is in grid line F, row 55, okay? But it's extended out 13 sixteenths. The tooth block is pretty unique because it uses two different location washers. One locates the tooth block at 1 8 inch increments and another that does 1 16th of an inch increments. All this is doing is shifting the teeth over 1 16th of an inch. 
So Jed has the luxury of using a fixture table like this. Why we're able to give him a map is because of this system right here. Being able to locate a moving slot and put it in the right hole and extend it out the right length. Now, in a normal fixture table that's not Fireball, why no other manufacturer gives you a map is because they can't tell you where to place this. What I mean by that is, yes, they do give you a grid on the table, they do give you a scale on the side, which you could then maybe say, go to the seventh grid line over and extend it out 200 millimeter. Yes, that works. But what the problem is with this is, what happens if this is on a 45? This no longer corresponds to what's going on. It is too hard to line up where you need to be as soon as this gets off of the grid. What I'm gonna be doing is coming up with a little tool. These are little indicators, which you can then drop over the top, put your pin in the hole, and now you're indicating off of the center, and then you can give yourself a nice reference surface to pull off of and tell you how far out extended you are. These are gonna be pretty slick. This is what you need to be able to make yourself a fixture map if you have these infinity slot fixtures. We don't have to worry about any of this because the Fireball system already takes care of that for you. Stay tuned for these. They're not available yet, but I will be coming out with these in the future. If you have a 5 8 fixture table, Build Pro, Sig Min, I will have a version of this for you. Okay, Jet, let's take a look at this. So now you're gonna do is say how far extended is it and in what hole? Okay. So I'm gonna do this one over here. Front of the hole, that is gonna be in row 55, grid line F. That look right? Yeah. Looks right. So I'm gonna put first hole in the fixture right there. Now, what does it say? Now it says I'm extended 13 sixteenths. So you see how that's extended it out right there at 1 16th, that's all the way up? Yeah. I'm gonna extend it out 13 sixteenths. So I'm gonna jump this over until it hits right there. This washer under here is 1 16th. I know that I'm gonna be right, okay? Okay. And then you lock it down. You grab another pin in the back to keep it from pivoting because we don't want this thing to swivel. And we put it in the right spot. And then we just snug them up. There, have we pulled a tape measure out yet? No. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. Okay, now you do the next one. Okay, right here at F7. Okay. The neat thing about this system is I can just come up here and visually inspect and I can say, it looks like you're on 13, 16. I can look over here, you're in seven. Say, are you in the right hole? F, boom, you got it, it's in the right spot. This is the neat thing about going from a dragon wagon, which is a thinner table, is that all the tooling's the same. And as you can see, we're blending the two fixtures together with just simple spacers. And then you can use it as a wing, like we are now later. I think you are you got it set. Should we put the material in there? Are you confident it's gonna fit? A little bit. <laughs> a little bit? Okay, start putting your material in, see how, see how you're lined up. Did you look at that? What we're gonna do is we need to elevate the work up so that you can weld down the sides. Okay. What we're using are these magnetic shim blocks and they all come in different thicknesses and they can fit to a one, two, three block. We got them from a 32nd of an inch all the way up to a one inch thick. But we're using these half inchers to get it up off the table. Now we can take the gun and you can weld down the seam, get all the way to the edge. But if it's sitting on the table, you run the risk of welding your part to the table or leaving your weld short. That's the next step, Jet. Grab a whole hand full of clamps. Remember, you have a lot of force with these clamps, so make sure you put the clamp right over the top of a shim, because this is a long span. If you were to put it here, you could bend it. Now let's take a look. We're tight here. We've got a little gap here. Do we want to adjust our gaps a little bit? That doesn't look that yeah, it doesn't, bad. It doesn't look very bad. We could probably sl slide it a little bit. That's the other neat thing about a fixture table. See how I'm able to kind of tweak the joint a little bit? Split the difference between the two. And since I'm able to see the whole picture, we're able to do that. So I see another problem here, Jet. I know where all your gaff went, right here. Uh-oh. Do you see that? Yeah. So this whole thing would have been short. Yeah. So scoot it all over. Thought but... I got lucky. <laughs> no. You're gonna earn your Big Gap Welders membership card <laughs> on this one. <laughs> I wanna find one that's maybe an eighth of an inch longer. So we found a little bit longer part, cut a little bit on the long side, and we're gonna switch it, see if we can fill the gap a little bit. Try that one. Oh yeah. How's that? Perfect. So that's one thing about cutting metal is the saw blade might wander, twist, or move a little bit. So we're able to accommodate that. Okay, so one last look over, make sure everything's touching the stops. That's what we're gonna look at. Touching, touching, everything's touching. Looks like it's clamped there's fairly well. It could be moved a little bit. Adjust, adjust, adjust. So there's something a little bit weird here. I don't know if it's just how it's clamped. It'd be good to kind of maybe overlap the two parts together. Do this so they share the same shim. Yeah. There you go, it's much better. They're all on the same plane. 
Okay, Jet's got everything all clamped down nice and tight, and now he's gonna get ready to start welding. I wanna give you a quick reminder of how we're gonna do this so we don't damage the table. Anytime we ground the welder to the table, we always wanna go to the work and not from the table up into the work as we can create a little arc that it gets hard and it raises a burr on this top surface. So where do we put the ground? Put it on here. You can put it on the clamp, yep, or on a fixture. So let's do that. Where? You're gonna put it on the clamp on the end. That way it's out of your way and it's not gonna impede your welding. The next thing, you're gonna be doing some downhill welds. What is this for? So you don't get any spatter or anything else on the welding table. Okay, put that where you're gonna go. Great, that goes underneath the weld. So even though this fixture table is amazing at holding the parts straight and square, we still have to do some weld sequencing, which means is we have four welds we have to do on this. Do you remember which welds we do first? Do the outside first. Right. Over the top. Okay, but over the top, which direction are you going? Are you going from crotch out to the point, or are you going from point to the inside of the crotch? Crotch to the outside. Right, inside to outside. And then the fillet on the inside is always last. Remember? Yeah. So get everything tacked, get it welded, and then we'll inspect it when it's done and see how close it stayed to where we wanted it to be, okay? All right. Weld away. Take a look at this. Got something moved, so we're a little short. Yeah. We're short by what? 32nd, 16th? I think we'll be okay there, though. One of the things that I love about a fixture table and having somebody new using it is that now Jet can focus on some of his skill sets that need to be worked on, like welding. He doesn't have to worry about, are they gonna stay in place? All Jet has to worry about is trying to make a good weld and just filling the gap. If you don't have a fixture table and it's not held down, you're worried about, uh, did it move? Did it shift? Is it still the right measurement? Did it roll? Did it twist? There's just a lot to do and experienced welders can do that but as a new welder it's just a lot for him to take in and we want our youth and our beginners to have success and I think a fixture table is great at doing that okay jet I'm looking at some of your welds it looks like you got some of them out of sequence but that's okay because I can look down the rail and it looks like it's still straight well, we're all pretty good looks like you got her figured out some of you guys are probably saying, Jason, why didn't you teach Jet some of the old ways? My answer to that is, would you learn how to type on a typewriter right now? Learn how to thread paper in, tap, 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 tap. Or what about if you're a lumberjack and chopping a tree down with an ax? Those ways and those tools are really aren't used that much, right? This is the future. So I wanna train Jet using current modern fixturing welding tools. But for now, this is the way we're gonna be doing it, right? This is yeah. what we got available to us. This is the future. But overall, I think is gonna have a lot of success. The next setup is basically moving the blocks down because this piece just keeps getting shorter and shorter and shorter. So now Jet has some maps to follow and he can place the parts where they need to go and we can finish this up. You excited to see it up there on the wall? Yeah. Need to flip this over. Okay. Weld it up. Ready to get back to work, right? Yep. Stop talking, right dad? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I know that these fixture tables can look a little intimidating. So if you're a high school, college, or some other educational institution teaching others the skills of fabrication, fixturing, and welding, or you're just an individual looking to learn more, I have a series of videos to aid in your curriculum. I want to see everyone succeed at whatever they're trying to build. And so I invite you all to the Fireball Forum where we can continue the discussion, answer any questions you have, and be the first to see any new Fixture Fundamentals videos. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.